Welcome students to the functional anatomy of the endocrine system, which is exercise 27. Um, so the endocrine system is one of our two main regulatory system. Um, it's how one of the ways our body kind of communicates to other parts of the body. Um, unlike the nervous system, which uses action potentials, the endocrine system uses hormones, little chemical messengers um, that uh, travel through the bloodstream that are very, very target specific. Um, so the endocrine system works kind of kind of hand in hand with the nervous system to regulate all of our various body functions. And so the endocrine system can get very confusing to students. Um, there are a lot of different hormones to kind of keep track of, um, but hopefully we're going to go through it um, and we're going to couple do, do a couple activities in the lab that should help as well. Um, so the endocrine system is one of our kind of homeostasis systems. Nervous system is as well, particularly, especially um, the autonomic nervous system, um, but your body really wouldn't function very well without an endocrine system. And in fact, when your endocrine system screws up, um, there can be some really weird, crazy, and strange things that happen um, when you have an endocrine disorder. So I mentioned that the endocrine system is very target specific. And in fact, if the endocrine system didn't have kind of this target cell specificity, it really wouldn't be able to function at all. So the target cells are the tissues and organs that have receptors for a specific hormone. But if a particular organ or cell doesn't have a receptor for this particular hormone, then that hormone will not be able to affect that cell so for instance, here you can see, here, here's our little secretory cell, here's our little endocrine cell, so here's our hormone traveling through the blood. Well, these cells here have a receptor that can kind of bind, lock, and key to the hormone, and so the hormone can affect these target cells. Now, for instance, uh, and that's what you're seeing here too, here's a little receptor, it can respond to the hormone. However, this little target cell, it doesn't have that receptor for that hormone, um, and so this hormone will not be able to affect this cell. That's why some hormones will affect only um, a specific type tissue or maybe a couple of different tissues. Uh, so that target cell specificity is incredibly, incredibly vital. Um, some other things you'll need to know in terms of the endocrine system, some of that kind of generic, kind of general endocrine information that we just kind of went over. You'll also want to be able to locate an ID all of the major endocrine organs. You're also going to look at a couple of select endocrine organs kind of microscopically. So you're going to look at some histology. Um, but mostly really what you're going to be focusing on are the various hormones. What is the source? So where are they made? What organ makes them? Their target? Where do they go? Um, and then what do they do? Um, and it, it's really helpful. Uh, again, students can get a little lost in all the hormones. It's really helpful. There's a in, there's like a chart, if you make like a chart or a, a flow chart or a diagram or even like a table with all the hormones listed and kind of where they go, um, it, it's really important to keep it all straight. Um, so you got to have your study materials very organized for the endocrine system. Um, and then lastly, we're going to look at um, kind of endocrine cascades, how the endocrine system kind of communicates um, with itself and with other parts of the body. So if we look at the major endocrine glands themselves, we'll start up here in the brain. Um, so the pineal gland um, is part of the nervous system, but it's also part of the endocrine system. The hypothalamus as well is both neural and endocrine. Um, and then the pituitary gland here, which is a really, really important gland. We've got the thyroid here in the throat with the parathyroid on the back of them. The thymus here in the thoracic cavity, the two adrenal glands, which is sitting atop the kidneys, the pancreas, which sits behind the stomach, and then the gonads, ovaries for our females, testes for our males. There are some other um, organs. I'm going to go back here for a second. There are other organs of the body that produce hormones, um, but they're not kind of considered kind of major endocrine organs. These are the endocrine glands that you should know. 
Um, so we're going to start actually up um, at the top with the, uh, the hypothalamus and the hypophysis or the pituitary gland um, because these are two of the most important of the endocrine glands in part because they help regulate other endocrine glands. Um, so the hypothalamus um, does a couple different things. It regulates the pituitary gland by releasing what we call um, releasing or inhibiting hormones um, and then it also so creates a bunch of hormones uh, or two hormones really called ADH and oxyto oxytocin, um, which actually get released by the posterior pituitary. And we're gonna look um, at the two glands of the, um, or the two lobes of the pituitary and how the hypothalamus communicates with both of them here in just a second. The pituitary gland itself um, sits on this little stalk called the infundibulum. So the posterior pituitary is what connects to the hypothalamus via the infundibulum stalk. Um, and so the posterior pituitary is actually neural tissue. Um, it is the neurohypophysis. It is essentially an extension of the hypothalamus. And then the anterior pituitary or the adenohypophysis is actual glandular tissue and they'll look very different microscopically. Um, so the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland have two very different kind of communication systems, whether we're talking about the anterior pituitary or the posterior pituitary. So if we look at the anterior pituitary and the hypothalamus first, um, essentially what we have are um, these hormones here, or these cell bodies of these neurons here will secrete either releasing hormones or inhibiting hormones into what we call the hypophyseal portal system, this little capillary system, which then brings these releasing or inhibiting hormones to the anterior pituitary, and then will either turn on the activity of the anterior pituitary or turn off the activity of the anterior pituitary. So neurons in the hypothalamus make the hormones, Hormones are secreted into the blood, travel to the anterior pituitary. The releasing hormones turn on the anterior pituitary. The inhibiting hormones turn off the anterior pituitary. The relationship between the hypothalamus and the posterior pituitary is quite a bit different. Here we have these cell bodies of our neurons up here in the hypothalamus, and they're gonna be what actually makes these different hormones, and they're gonna travel down, and the axons don't end here, but actually extend down the stalk of the infundibulum and are finally released by the axon terminals here into the posterior pituitary. And then the posterior pituitary essentially stores them. So the posterior pituitary doesn't make any other hormones, where the anterior pituitary does when, or when it's stimulated to do so by a releasing hormone. So two very different um, kind of communication uh, modus operandi between the hypothalamus and posterior and anterior pituitary glands. If we look at the anterior pituitary a little bit more, um, when the anterior pituitary gets a releasing hormone, um, it then produces a different hormone. Um, the hormones from the anterior pituitary fall into two categories, what we call tropic hormones or non-tropic hormones. Tropic hormones are hormones that target other endocrine organs, so they're going to travel to other endocrine organs. Things like thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH, which goes to the thyroid, adrenocorticotropin hormone, which goes to the adrenal gland, and then follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, which go to the ovaries and the testes, depending on sex. The non-tropic hormones their hormones, these are hormones that travel and target kind of non-endocrine organs. So we're maybe talking about growth hormone, which goes to the bones, the muscle, and the liver. Those things are not endocrine organs, and so it's considered a non-tropic hormone. Prolactin is another anterior pituitary hormone that is considered non-tropic um, because it goes to the mammary glands. 
for milk production. Um, growth hormone, of course, is, well, growth. Uh, never would have guessed, right? Uh, the posterior pituitary, again, is essentially an extension of the hypothalamus. And so it kind of stores the ADH and the oxytocin that were made by the hypothalamus, um, and they kind of get released when needed. ADH, antidiuretic hormone, is a hormone that helps us conserve water. Uh, oxytocin uh, does a couple different things. It causes ejection of milk from the mammary glands, um, contraction of the uterus during labor and delivery. Um, it's also kind of the love hormone. Um, it strengthens, when, when you're falling in love, your brain is essentially flooded with oxytocin. If we look at the pineal gland, it makes one hormone, melatonin, um, which helps us put us to sleep. The thyroid gland actually secretes three hormones, two that are related, thyroxine and triiodothyronine. Um, they're very similar structurally, except T4 has four iodine molecules and T3 has three iodine molecules attached to it. Um, T3 and T4 are our major metabolic hormones, um, so they increase our metabolic rate and help um, some other organ systems develop. Calcitonin also comes out of the thyroid gland. Um, it is an antagonist to parathyroid. It decreases our blood calcium levels. Um, it usually stimulates our bones to kind of absorb calcium from the blood and make some new bone tissue. The parathyroid gland makes one hormone, parathyroid hormone. Uh, parathyroid hormone increases blood calcium, so it actually activates the osteoclast bone cells, which are essentially little bone-eating cells that break down bone tissue and release calcium back into the blood. Um, and then we have the thymus, um, which produces several different hormones and proteins, um, but really all related to the development of our T lymphocytes. In terms of the adrenal glands, uh, they're separated into an outer cortex and an inner medulla. The cortex secretes what we call corticosteroids. So these are lipid-based hormones that use cholesterol as their starting point. We have mineralocorticoids like aldosterone, which helps regulate water and electrolyte balance, helps regulate our blood pressure. We have glucocorticoids, which uh, things like cortisol, uh, that helps um, our bodies kind of deal with stress, usually by increasing the amount of blood glucose so that we have more kind of sugar to deal um, and to make energy and ATP. And then the gonadocorticoids, which are sex hormones, um, things like androgens and a little bit of estrogen, but, but mostly male sex hormones. Um, and then the inner part of the adrenal gland, the medulla, is actually um, a misplaced sympathetic nervous system ganglion. Um, so it functions as part of the sympathetic nervous system. And so it releases norepinephrine and epinephrine and all of the kind of things that you associate with those kind of fight or flight responses um, are enhanced by the release of epinephrine and norepinephrine from the adrenal medulla. If we look at the pancreas, um, the pancreas has both an endocrine function and an exocrine function. It actually functions as two um, parts of um, two organ systems, the endocrine system and the digestive system. The endocrine portion of the pancreas are what is known as islet cells. They produce insulin and glucagon, which help regulate our blood sugar. Uh, glucagon raises blood sugar, insulin decreases our blood sugar, so they're antagonistic to each other as well. Um, and then the acinar portion of the pancreas secretes digestive hormones uh, into ducts. That's why they're exocrine glands. Um, and those digestive enzymes help break down all of our food so that we can extract nutrients from it. Um, so the pancreas is kind of a neat thing because it has both an endocrine and an exocrine function, an endocrine function and a digestive function. Lastly, we have the gonads, the testes and the ovaries, testes male, ovaries female. They're going to produce our sex hormones, so things like testosterone in men, estrogen, progesterone in women, um, and it's all related to maturation of um, kind of sexual characteristics, reproduction, um, all of that related to um, the kind of reproductive and sexual maturation process. 
um, you're going to look microscopically um, at um, the pituitary, the thyroid, the parathyroid, the pancreas, and the adrenal gland. Um, and we have a whole separate lecture just on the microscopic anatomy of these different endocrine organs. Um, so uh, you should definitely listen to that before you come to lab um, so that you have an idea of what to expect in terms of what should be in your histology notebook um, and um, what to kind of look for um, when you get to lab uh, and look at the endocrine organs under the microscope. Um, lastly, we're going to look at a cascade. Um, this is where like, flowcharts can come in handy in terms of studying the endocrine system. Um, this one here happens to be a tropic cascade because it involves TSH, which is a tropic hormone. Um, but but flowcharts are kind of a really good visual way of looking at the endocrine system. Um, so for instance, we'll start here with the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus makes what we call TRH or thyrotropin releasing hormone. Thyrotropin releasing hormone travels through the blood where it stimulates the anterior pituitary to make a tropic hormone called TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone. The thyroid stimulating hormone travels through the blood to the thyroid. It's the only organ that has a receptor for TSH. And when the thyroid gland is stimulated by thyroid stimulating hormone, the thyroid glands will produce T3 and T4. T3 and T4 will go to all of their target cells, cause increases in metabolism. Um, and when we've got sufficient levels of thyroid hormone that kind of negatively feedbacks or feeds back, excuse me, and inhibits the anterior pituitary from making TSH, inhibits the hypothalamus from making TRH, and may actually induce the hypothalamus to make TIH thyrotropin inhibiting hormone, which will further shut off um, the anterior pituitary. Um, and so these kind of cascade flow chart um, type of um, study tool, and um, it's definitely something that is quite, quite, quite useful. Um, and that's uh, where we're headed really with the endocrine system. I'll see you guys in lab. We're actually going to play a little game about the endocrine system, which should hopefully help.